Hi everybody. Today for our holiday science, we are going to be working on our Christmas chromatography. So in the end, we are going to have Christmas light bulbs that you can hang up in your hallway, inside your classroom, or even at home if you decide to do this experiment at home. So today we have Joseph and we also have Jada. They're both in the sixth grade and they are going to help me out today. All right, so let's get started. As you can see, your requirements for your materials are very basic, very easy. You can easily find these within your house. You can find them within the classroom. Uh, pennies on the dollar. The only thing that you may have to bring into the classroom are coffee filters. You can even use filter paper as well. Now I know in the store you have the um, option of buying darker coffee filters. That's perfectly fine. But in my opinion, the white coffee filters um, do give this experiment a little bit more color and a little bit more pop um, for the students to see. All right, so let's get started. So Joseph and Jada have decided, um, they already went ahead and pre-drew what they wanted their shape to be. In order to differentiate with your students, you can already have these drawn out, you can have them already cut out, maybe a student helper, or even you had the time after school, before the lab even started, to cut out the shapes for everybody. I do also highly recommend that this is not a group project. You can place them in groups just so they have an opportunity to maybe discuss what's going on with each other in a little bit closer of a setting. But absolutely, it should be done on an individual basis. Every single student should have the opportunity um, to be able to make their own Christmas trees, snowmen, light bulbs, whatever they decide that they want to cut out on their filter paper or whatever you have decided to cut out in advance. Today, Jada and Joseph have drawn what they want. They both decided on Christmas trees today. So with a pencil, not with a marker, not with a Sharpie, but with a pencil, they drew what they wanted to cut out. So I'm gonna give them um, a little bit of time. So what I did is I took coffee filters I cut the coffee filter in half. I handed them a pile. There's no set number. Um, and I gave that to the student. They then took simply a pencil. They drew their own artwork on it. Make sure when you're walking around and monitoring your students that they do something that's pretty simplified because what's going to happen is they're going to end up having to cut their, um, their shape out. So for the younger grades, again, it's probably a really good idea if your um, shapes are already cut out like I've done here. So I took the time to go ahead and draw out a Christmas light bulb shape on a coffee filter and I cut them out and I placed them in front. So that's an easy way for your younger students to all already get a head start start on the experiment. So with Christmas chromatography, what we're going to do, our materials we have are coffee filters, markers, and water. It's just that simple. So what I'm going to allow Joseph and Jada to do today is I'm going to give them a few minutes of time to go ahead and cut out their shapes. So you all can go ahead and start doing that. And while your students are cutting out their shapes, give them the free time um, to talk to each other um, about maybe where are they going on the break or what do they want from Santa Claus this year. Um, and in the back, you could have a timer on. You could have told them already that you, um, you have five minutes to do this, you have two minutes to do this. If this is an option, you do want to give your students to cut out their own shape. So maybe you've given them time, you've put a little music in the background of your classroom, you've let your kids talk about maybe what they're gonna do over the holiday break, and now we're ready to get to the experiment. What I had them do is I had them cut out their shapes and place them on their, just a really cheap aluminum pan. You can get these at the dollar store in bulk for really cheap, or um, at any of your neighborhood grocery stores as well. Um, and I, what you do is you make sure that they're one at a time, and you just have your students place them on your aluminum pans, just pretty much like you would do a biscuit. Make sure they all have a little bit of space in between them as well, because you are, you possibly could get some runoff, and um, you need to make sure that you warn your students um, when this experiment is going on that some bleeding may occur, um, some cross coloring may occur, depending on how much water that they use um, on their objects. Okay, so Jada and Joseph, um, what you're going to do is you're going to pick a marker. I'm going to show you it first. 
Today, I'm gonna use purple, for example, and I have some different examples to the side that you can go ahead and have showing up on your screen, because some, some students may be confused on exactly, well, what kind of shapes? Do I color in the whole thing? Do I do, I do just one dot, two dots? What, can I do lines? You're gonna give them a couple options um, of what they can do before they pour the water onto the coffee filter shape. There's many more, these are just a few examples. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna color one in the solid in the middle. I'm gonna do one that has a couple dots around, maybe one with a giant circle, maybe one with only dots around the outside, maybe an X, and maybe one that has a squiggle, okay? Make sure they use at least one color and no more than three colors on each object. If you get over three colors, you're eventually with the water, it possibly could just turn black and that's what happens. So um, we're gonna do some more dots over here, maybe some more smaller dots, maybe something like this, a squiggle here, maybe some dots here and maybe some dots like that, okay? They can use their imagination for what shapes they wanna use on their object. Okay, so I've shown them some ideas in front of the class and hopefully you could show them on a PowerPoint presentation, on an overhead perspective of what shapes that they have options of, just to give them something in their mind. They can always ask of their friends that they're sitting with at their tables. They can also ask their classmates that are also at the tables with them as well. So what's your minimum amount of colors? One. And what's your maximum? Three. Three, very good. So you can pick any colors, it doesn't matter. You can even use black if you want to. I don't recommend that you have black available for them because it is a very strong color and it can absorb the other colors as well. If you just wanna lay out holiday colors, that's fine. You're the teacher, you have the option of laying out whatever colors that you want them to use. So give them a few minutes to use whatever colors they want on their objects. And again, you can play music in the background. Um, you can walk around and monitor at the same time to make sure that they don't have any questions and that they are doing this correctly. So as you can see, um, they're using whatever colors that they want and they're using whatever um, shape that they want inside of their object. That's another reason why you should be walking around. You're, you need to make sure they're not actually coloring in the object because the point of this is chromatography. So you want them to watch almost that tie-dyed effect. You do absolutely want to give them a time limit while they are doing this experiment because they could get off on talking about their holiday and what they're gonna do during the break. They could get kind of carried away. Another option to make sure that you have is washable markers because I guarantee that they are, they are gonna get markers on their hands and that's okay. You should also tell your students um, that they sh can bring an old t-shirt, an extra large t-shirt or something to put over their clothes so you can ensure that nothing is gonna get on their clothes as well while they're doing the experiment. Okay, so now we're gonna to get to, to where they put the water on the objects, and they're gonna do this one at a time. So for the younger generation, you're probably gonna to want to use pipettes. You're gonna to need to instruct them how to use these pipettes with water in front of each child, and you're gonna show them and they're gonna practice within that cup of water before they actually drop the water onto the objects to see the chromatography actually happen. So today we're gonna to use spoons because we have two sixth graders here and I think it gives a little bit more of an effect. They can use um, a little bit more experimenting with it. And I've instructed them before we even started today that when they have the, um, the spoon, they're gonna fill it up a little bit with water and I'll show you just like I showed them and I had them practice as well in the cup. So they took the spoon and they put a little bit of water in the spoon. And again, like I said, because they are in sixth grade, there's an addition to this experiment, meaning I'm gonna have them drop at a lower level, I'm gonna have them drop at a higher level, and I'm gonna have them try to see if they can, is it easier to go in the front of the spoon? Is it easier to get drops on the side of the spoon? And then I'm also gonna have them, what happens to their object, what happens to the coloring if they accidentally put a whole bunch of water on at the same time. Is that wrong? No, that's perfectly fine. That's part of the fun of science. Another thing I wanna point out is make sure that whatever your objects are laying on have some sort of lip because you are gonna have the, the access of water as well. Okay, so go ahead. Remember to experiment. You can hold the cup in your hand if that gives you more stability. That's perfectly fine as well. And watch the magic happen.
And you can have worksheets to the side as they're going for each object and they're experimenting. You can have them write down, um, it, was it at a high level, a shorter level, front of the spoon, the side of the spoon. Uh, what, you can get into velocity and speed and height and measurement. You can get into all of those things with this experiment for the older the students are. An idea that Joseph had was another way to add to this experiment as well is have different type of markers and have them hypothesize at the very beginning which marker is going to be the best one for spreading of color when it, has, um, when it comes in contact with water. And as you can see, they are saturated, and that's the point of using filter paper over printer paper, is you're gonna have the ability of the water to spread through the filter paper much better than you would on printer paper. So once your students are done adding water to all of their objects, you can tell, as you can see, they're completely saturated. You're going to need to give them time to dry out. And once they dry out, we're going to hang them on yarn and we're going to make it really decorative within the classroom or within your house.